Okay, good, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, Gina. We appreciate you. Um, thank you for joining us on this Saturday afternoon as we sip and chat and have a conversation about autism awareness and early childhood. But before we get started, we would just like to introduce ourselves. My name is Audrey Pearson. I am in the Master's Social Work Program at Georgia State University. I'm happy to be here. And if you have any questions, Gina, just feel free to just put your questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Now I will turn it over to Megan and the rest of the team to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Megan Walsh and I am a parent advocate, part of the Georgia Lend 2022-2023 cohort. I am a master's level social worker and I also have a seven-year-old autistic son and a five-year-old neurotypical son. Hi, I'm Aurelia Torres. I am a graduate research assistant at Georgia State University, and it's great to see everyone today. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Fox. I'm a self-advocate here at Georgia Lynn. To give some context of what Georgia Lynn is, um, Georgia Lynn stands for the Georgia Leadership Education and Neurodevelopmental and Related Disabilities. It's a cohort comprised of um, medical students as well as graduate students within the public health education and policy related disciplines. We also have um, parent advocates and self advocates like myself um, to create a cohort that is interdisciplinary and can help move forward systematic change in the disability field, specifically in Georgia. Um, in short, it is a interdisciplinary disability studies program. Um, we will also be joined shortly by Jackie McNair, who's another um, parent advocate, and she has a daughter who is older with autism, and she will share her experience. And I'm Takia. I am a Master of Social Work student at Kennesaw State University. Um, I have my internship with uh, 3D Girls, and I work um, also with Audrey at the agency as well. Okay, ladies, thank you for that. Today, we will be going over why it is important to monitor development in children. The Center for Disease Control Learn the Science Act Early program and some of the free tools and resources offered to use when tracking your child's development. First, we will discuss what it means to be a monitor development. Anyone can monitor a child's development. It is important that everyone who cares for a child monitor their development. Developmental monitor monitoring means observing, noting special ways a child play, learn, speak, act, and move in every day and ongoing way. Developmental monitoring often involves tracking a child's development, using a checklist, a developmental milestone, which we will discuss later in the presentation. All the children develop their own pace. Uh, most children reach their developmental milestones at about the same age. Developmental milestones is an ongoing flexible process and it's done not required by special training. It can be done by um, anyone can do um, developmental monitoring. Georgia's Act Early Program to identify the early signs of autism is a comprehensive approach that includes caregiving, teachers, um, providers, and specialists. I am a grandmother. I have a 20, well, she'll be two at, on the 22nd of April. And just to watch her meet her milestones and celebrate her um, milestones is exciting. The milestones are from age um, birth to five years old to help her celebrate the child's development, identify concerns early and discuss a child's progress with professionals. Healthcare providers, early childhood teachers and other trainers, providers can also monitor a child's development milestone, including interventions, including nine months, 18 months, and 30 months. Autism screening can be completed at 18 and 24 months to determine if the child is a developmental um, evaluation. Lastly, if um, concerns are identity, 
when developmental evaluation, you should complete a developmental and have a discussion with your pediatrician and other trained providers to identify diagnosis developmental delays to find out if the child needs special support or early intervention. And I just wanted to share this article with you. According to the article found by Disability Health and Studies done by National Institution of Health found by children who receive developmental monitoring or developmental screening has a greater odds of early intervention compared to children receiving developmental monitoring only or developmental screening only or the developmental monitoring or developmental screening. The studies also found that more adults tend to only do one or the other with the child, not both together. Results of this studies indicate that developmental monitoring and developmental screening may indicate more children with developmental delays and disabilities who needs early intervention than doing either developmental monitoring or developmental screening separately. So all stand all together, doing both increase early detection of delays and is better for the child. Developmental monitoring gives families the confidence and caregivers the knowledge and language they need to communicate about their child. I wanna thank you ladies and I'm gonna turn it over to Megan. Thanks so much, Audrey. Um, as I mentioned before, I have a seven-year-old autistic son, so I will kind of talk about these resources from the lens of a parent who's kind of gone through this process and how these resources really could have benefited our family as they were not available when my son was younger. So um, there are lots of resources available and it's, there's a wealth of information for families now, and we want to make sure that you all have all that information available to you. So the CDC has a wonderful website for the Learn the Signs Act Early program, and it is referenced here. So if you want to go on there and do some further research about the program and find ways to get additional resources for yourself or to order some of the printed materials. You just go onto this website and I know uh, Morelia will be talking in more detail about that a little bit later on. So the Learn the Signs Act Early program creates a developmental checklists for children at all of these various ages. Um, there are things that you can look at, look at in different domains, including their social emotional milestones, their language and communication, uh, cognitive milestones, so things the child should be learning and problem solving. And the last section is about movement and physical development. So when it comes to my son, we noticed with him, um, at 18 months, he had almost no language. Um, he was barely able to say mama and dada. Um, and then he used a lot of echolalia, which is repeating tr or trying to repeat what other people are saying rather than creating his own language. So that was an issue that I brought up with our pediatrician to say, you know, we're, we're seeing kind of he's, he's leveling off in his language development. So that was a, a red flag for him to get some further testing. And in a, about six months after that, he received the diagnosis of autism. So um, these are super important just to um, look out for and think about as you're watching your child develop. And there are things like Audrey said that we as parents and caregivers can notice about our children since we are the ones that spend the most time with them and then bring those concerns to the pediatrician if it is something that you are seeing that may be a milestone that they're not reaching. And there's also some great resources on the website about different activities that you can do with your child so that you're not just sitting there checking off a list. There are, thing, there are ways that you can engage with them and play with them to evaluate whether or not they're actually reaching these milestones. So fun ways to connect. And um, another thing that we noticed with my son is that he didn't really look at people 
Um, he looked more at objects. He would look at shapes and uh, colors and, but he didn't really engage with people's faces. Um, so that was another thing that we brought the, to the attention of the pediatrician. Um, and that was one of the follow-up questions for his autism screening. Um, so, and if you do have concerns about the development of your child, your first stop is to go make an appointment with your child's pediatrician um, and bring that milestone checklist with you so that you can start a dialogue about what you're seeing. Because sometimes those appointments can be rushed and you, you forget what you're going to say. So it's always helpful just to write a few things down or if you can bring the checklist with you to say these are, you know, three or four areas where I, I'm not seeing my child developing. Um, can we have a further conversation about this? And then you can um, engage with the doctor at that point um, about continuing to monitor. So the other great thing about the Learn the Signs Act Early materials is that they provide you with reminders about when the developmental screenings are actually happening. So at 18 months is when one of the uh, screenings will take place at your pediatrician's off office. And they go through and break it down by these categories as to what you should be seeing. And then they're reminding you, okay, now is time to have a conversation with your child's pediatrician um, about anything that you're noticing. And um, like I said, this is when things kicked in for my son was right at 18 months when we were noticing things were um, not developing on track as um, they would typically do with many children that age. So, um, and then we got involved in the early intervention program shortly after that. And now I'm going to turn it over to Morelia. Sorry. Sorry, I was muted. Here we have an example of how the app works. Um, the app is completely free. It's provided and created by the CDC. It's available on the App Store, on Google Play. And the app is just a way of having that interactive and technology support. It has the checklist all in one place. It has the ability where you can go in and create a profile for your child or up to, I believe it's like, for children that you can create about four different profiles and start inputting the stuff so you can keep track of stuff. It even has a reminder. If you're putting in something in the checklist and they say this might be a concern, you should try and seek out a referral. It'll remind you, hey, have you made that referral appointment? Hey, have you considered um, reaching out to a provider? So the app is really practical and it's really easy to use. And now we have the milestone booklet. The milestone booklet is really practical as well. It's a physical copy of the checklist of the developmental tracking system. So you can just track and write everything down. Um, these can be ordered online or given to people who ask for them by one of the Learn the Science Act early trainees. And they are translated in Spanish and Korean and Chinese. They are working on more languages and they're very interactive. They include lots of activities to do with your children to be able to monitor those um, milestones. All right, and now we have a short video we are going to play. It talks a little bit about the perspectives of the parents using the booklet and their experience with the app. Clara is our first child and we didn't know what to expect <laughs> being first time parents. Um, and it's just been such a fun experience to watch her grow. Starting out very early, we monitored Clara's development using the Learn the Science Act Early checklist. It was just an amazing resource to be able to say, okay, you know, what this is what she should be doing at this age. Um, and it calmed our fears a little bit 
I would have to say my favorite resource of the Learn the Science Act early would be the app. But having that readily available has honestly been great. Um, and it's been awesome just seeing her, her development and growth. The Learn the Science Act early app is actually very easy to use. I can access it right there on my phone. And whenever my mind kind of pops to it, I, I can open it up. I think I am a Learn the Science Act Early super user. The Learn the Science Act Early materials have been invaluable to me because I feel like they've been there with me throughout parenthood in kind of the way that a wise old friend might be. Using Learn the Science Act Early has helped me monitor my daughter's development and gives me a great peace of mind that the information is accurate and it's backed by science. It's fun to see when she achieves a milestone. Um, I feel very proud for her and excited. And it's not just a milestone of, is my child doing this next thing? It's what should I be working with my child next? Because that, that can be a big question mark as a first time parent. You know, I want to know if maybe she's lagging farther behind than she really should, and then it's something to bring up with our pediatrician. Having something at my fingertips to kind of go through it with her physician, she's hitting these milestones, but not these other milestones. Should I be concerned? Uh, what kinds of things can I do to bring her up to speed? And then taking that and translating it with her teachers in her classroom to make sure these are the things I would like to focus on and how can we work together to make sure that she's developing her appropriately. The Learn the Science Act Early resources empower parents to take a stake in, in tracking their child's developmental milestones. That was a cute little video. And now we are going to talk about, about the Amazing Me books. These books are super interactive, as you guys can tell. They're very cute and adorable and easy to follow along with your young ones. Um, there is an interactive e-version that can be accessed on the CDC's website for free. You could also order a physical copy. I know a lot of people like to have a physical copy on hand. So you can follow along with your, with your children. And the way that the books are set up, they incorporate the milestones in the stories. So it's a good way to monitor the milestones where at, without having to make it seem like you're just constantly um, waiting for your child to perform the milestones. You can just do it in a very natural state. And they were tested with teachers and other caretakers before being disseminated and parents seem to love them. So. Those are really cute and they're completely free. All right, so now referencing these one pagers again, Megan talked about them a little bit earlier. On the left hand, we have the Spanish version and on the right, we have the English version. So the thing about the one pagers is that they are a brief guide on how you should approach um, your children's physicians to kind of help with the we, we know that it can be a little bit stressful or a little bit scary just not knowing what to ask or when to ask it. So they give a few brief tips on how to approach them and what questions maybe you should bring up. And it's really brief. There's like, there's four steps and you see in the picture, the father um, raising concerns to the pediatrician. So they're very helpful. And parents also seem to like these because it's very condensed information that doesn't drag along. All right, and here we have the parent tip. The parents tip, you can also access these online. It's completely free. On the left hand, we have the parent tips broken up into the different age groups. So you can click a age depending on which stage your child is in and it will give you some brief tips. It's completely um, free online. All right, and here is the growth chart. These are very popular because they are very intricate and the children seem to also like these. It's a great way to monitor your child's physical growth while also monitoring the developmental milestones. They are um, sectioned off by the heights that your children are reaching or the months that they are reaching and they have little tips on the right hand. And there's like a little space where you could even include pictures just to keep track of this is where my child was at this age or at this milestone. And um, they're usually what parents reach out for at our table. So parents seem to like these. 
All right. So um, this is Lindsay. This is how to get the free materials. Um, Megan, Audrey, as well as Marilia has mentioned there is a website to gain these materials. They are free. They're easy to grab, easy to download as PDF. And um, we have a contact at the end as well where you can reach out to her. She's happy to um, put you in touch with the off, uh, right contact to get these materials um, as handheld copies rather than digital if that's for your thing. So how do you get to the site? Um, cdc.gov slash act early is where you can gain the free materials. Um, it's a really cool site, very simple, very organized well, or well, well organized. And you can navigate um, between all of the resources. So the milestones, all the materials we showed you today, it's also on the site. Um, if you go to the top of the website, um, at least on the main screen, um, you, you will see free materials and you can enter that button right there and you can get all the materials. Um, once you enter, you will see all the options, get free learn science act early materials, again, English, Spanish, um, and other languages as well are in the making. So whatever you need, we can accommodate you. And that is also cdc.gov act early. Um, DECAL is our um, partner today, and we also have a contact with them, um, which is at the end. You can reach this website by scanning the um, QR code, or you can type in development.decal.georgia.gov, and um, you can reach out to Bridget, who is our main contact, and she's happy to get you in touch with the resource as well. Um, the re way we can access this website specifically is you can go to additional resources at the three bars in the corner of the website. And if you're on the um, iPhone version, which is, or the smartphone version um, from the QR code, it's same thing. It should be at the top and it should be um, three bars with additional resources. So very simple to navigate. Um, of course, Bridget can answer any questions of how to navigate the, um, the websites. Bridget, I should add, is also the uh, Act Early Ambassador of Georgia. So she is a wealth of knowledge, always happy to help. And she's guided a lot of families. Um, of all types of families from Georgia, and she's happy to help. So what's next? What happens after Learn Signs Act early? Um, as your child grows and you check all the milestones, you have more options to different services that um, Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning, which is DECAL, can um, help you out with, and as well as the CDC. So you have Help Me Grow, which um, is a free and confidential service that connects families to programs and services across the state. There is a number below that, um, 888 Help Grow, um, and a number below that as well, which is 888-457-4769. Um, and they will put you in touch with the right people to help you out in this program. Um, Children's First is the entry point for all public health, child health programs and services and provides free developmental screenings to, children's, to children birth to five years old. And you can access the website through the QR code again or the link that is right there um, into your search bar. Lastly, Babies Can't Wait and that provides um, services to families with children who are birth to three years old and that have developmental baby disability delays. Again, same process, um, QR code and link. Um, so preschool and special education, 
What's really cool about all these resources is that as parents, you can be parent advocates too. Um, we always recommend parents um, once they're in the early child uh, or learn signs act early program, they have a plethora of resources they can get their providers. They have education trainings as well called Watch Me um, modules, and that can help your provider um, or educator learn more on how to help other families and how help your family as well. Um, and again, contact Bridget. She's great. She will give you all the guidance that you might need. So now we're going to kick it over to Jackie McNair. She's in our cohort as well. Um, she's a parent advocate and she has a great wealth of knowledge today. Um, so Jackie, I'm going to kick it over to you. Oops, sorry. There. Jackie, you're on mute. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Jackie. I'm the mother of an adult daughter who lives with autism and developmental delays. Uh, unlike Megan, my daughter seemed to be meeting all the milestones. Uh, I didn't notice any difference in her from her brother, who was like two and a half years older. It was not until she was about uh, 24 months old, she came down with fevers and like a respiratory viral uh, syndrome type thing. And when it left her, she was no longer speaking. She was no longer uh, seemed to have her same cognitive skills. Uh, so I did go and take her to the doctor and mention it. Uh, that's a long time ago. Uh, my daughter is now 27 years old. So back then, you never heard, the, I had never heard the word autism. Um, the doctors sort of seemed to brush it aside when I said she had stopped talking. And we had to go back a few months later. The second time I mentioned it, uh, they did get me uh, connected with the Marcus Autism Center. And that's where all the evaluations and the assessment started. Uh, and she was later diagnosed with autism and learning de and uh, development of delays. It was quite a journey. So if you're there and you're feeling like overwhelmed, don't be, uh, don't get too caught up in that. You will feel that way for probably all of your lives, but it gets better. So I do want to encourage you that uh, your child will grow as you grow. Uh, things will get better, even if they don't feel like they're going to get better. Uh, I would suggest to you to use all these materials that are at your hand now. You have so much more information than I had back then. There were no websites you could go to uh, to look at all of this that everybody's uh, done such a good job explaining. I only had my library resources back then that I could go to and it was very little known about autism at that time. So now the professionals are more aware of it. Uh, we have so many organizations uh, that are doing such a good job trying to get us on track with what's going on. So I would encourage you to get to know your child. And if you don't do anything, enjoy the journey, enjoy your child, uh, make the most of this time. And uh, don't compare your child to every other child that has autism uh, because they're all so different. They're all so different. Their challenges are different. Their gifts are different and they do have gifts. I would encourage you to uh, tap into those gifts and encourage the gifts that you see in your child. Uh, and I'm a... a a mom who is totally open to answering any questions too about my life and my journey. So feel free to ask whatever questions that uh, are on your mind today. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. That was a great wealth of information as per usual. Um, so we would like to share Bridget's contact. Bridget is, um, really wonderful again she's the act early um, ambassador of georgia so she's happy to answer your questions anytime this is her email and you can also go to the decal website to um, navigate that website as well and she can help you out with any resource um, so yes this was our act early presentation um, we thank you for joining us today and if you have any questions, let us know and we'll be happy to help out. Thank you. Gina?
just do you have any questions for us that you would like to ask? Um, yes, 